Thirteen years after Finding Nemo made a splash, Nemo, Marlin, and Dory are back. My mom, my dad, I have a family. I miss them. Resurrecting those beloved characters wasn't a matter of copying them from the original film. Pixar had to recreate them using updated technology, but still stay true to the character's look and design. They basically had to be rebuilt from scratch because we could no longer animate with them or light with them. But it was a new character that proved most challenging. Hank the Octopus wasn't technically possible for Finding Nemo. Hey, you. Hello. Spinner. Oh, thank goodness. Hi, I'm Dory. I'm Name's Hank. Simulating everything from an octopus tentacle movements to its squishiness to its camouflage proved quite complex and time-consuming. Pixar's first scene featuring Hank took two years to make. Actually, an engineer worked on Hank for about six months, I think, just figuring out how to do a new, uh, create a new type of curve that the tentacles could use. It can squash, it can stretch, it can move around. If you move a tentacle, the whole body reacts to that motion. For the sequel, advances in lighting, rendering, and Pixar's Presto animation system helped automate processes that took much more manpower and time in the first movie. A new technology called AutoSwim provided a recipe for animating swimming fish. The aquarium imagery of water and glass could look more sophisticated and natural, and unlike Finding Nemo, they didn't have to scale back on any water effects. Water is still challenging. Um, you know, the aesthetic bar for that is really high. But now we have the opportunity to, you know, do as, as much water effects as we can. Finding Dory opens in theaters on June 17th. In San Francisco, Brian Tong, CNET.com for CBS News. You'll be home.